This particular episode did not turn out anything like I expected it to. I got started writing what I thought I was going to do and completely changed it as the day went on. Um, I started, I want to talk about it, and I will continue to talk about all weekend, sometimes with others, um, about the earnings report, because there was a lot on the call, and there was also a lot missing. There was all, there was stuff in the earnings report, too. I mean, there was there was a ton of content there, but I also felt like there was key parts that were significant uh, that were not said. So I'm going to try to... Um, bring it out in a different way than anybody else is bringing it out. I think that's, you know, that's what I try to do, right? I'm trying to see it from a different perspective than anybody else is bringing. Like, for instance, thinking about the future when Tesla may not be selling cars at all. Um, anyway, uh, so like I said, that's what I started out to do. Um, I was going to talk about multiple issues and only go a couple inches deep. And then all of a sudden, well, anyway, I hope you enjoy an extremely deep dive into the primary component of all Tesla products. You see, we all know what, right? I, I told you this before, for those of you who watch all the time, years ago, I read this saying, this person you know, had made this statement that he who creates the better battery will be the richest man on the planet. And it turns out that this was true, um, but I can't find the quote. I can't find the quote anywhere, so I have no idea who said it. But anyway, that stayed with me all these years, especially now with what we've got with uh, Elon Musk. Well, the underpinning of the entire business, of course, is energy. And the main element in that energy aspect is storage through batteries. Um, it is of the utmost importance. It is critical to the Tesla future, to the moats around Tesla, that they have enough, enough of the right battery. So you can't have just enough batteries and have some of the batteries be the wrong batteries for the application. You've got to have the right batteries. You've got to have enough of those batteries. And then those batteries um, have to be able to um, be the state of the art. In fact, beyond the state of the art, we, you know, preferably that Tesla would always be having batteries that are totally uh, the number one best battery at the things that matter, which should be how much energy that they can produce at what cost and what other benefits and, and you know, uh, uh, benefits they, they provide. Other kinds of features like how fast they charge and discharge, how long can they charge and discharge, how, 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 uh, how flammable are they, under what conditions do they, are they, potentially going to have a problem with uh, catching fire or not catching fire. So there's all these different issues and some batteries, as you know, are good for some things like the nickel batteries are better for high performance things and the iron batteries are better for uh, things like battery storage. So uh, we, you and I probably, you know, if you're like me, you've learned more about batteries than you ever thought you were going to care about. Hopefully by the end of this particular uh, video, you'll know a lot more and you'll know Again, this will help you to make decisions about how you invest. I know you you might be all in, maybe you're kind of half in. Well, when you know what I'm going to tell you, I think it'll help you make some decisions. Well, okay, let's start here. To keep costs down and to keep raw materials local to manufacturing and to ensure supply, no matter what happens in terms of tariffs or breakdowns and relationships with other countries or whatever else, what you want to do, well, what Tesla has decided to do is they've built themselves a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi, and they take mined lithium from multiple resources. I understand possibly Chile is one of the main resources, but I think they have multiple resources where they're drawing these this lithium, maybe even right there in the, in the Gulf Coast. Um, and then they are putting them through a refinery material um, and what they get out of that is a spotamine concentrate. Um, um, uh, let's see, let's spot, spotamine concentrate lithium from lithium-rich clays, recycled EV batteries, and even manufacturing scrap. They turn it into high-purity lithium hydroxide. Now, that high-purity uh, lithium hydroxide is then shipped up to the facility in uh, at Giga Texas. Uh, where they're, you know, put into the cathodes. This inf this facility employs an innovative, acid-free refining process that uses less hazardous reagents 
In other words, they're not using soda ash and lime, which many other people use in this process. And it doesn't, and it generates byproducts such as a mixture of sand and limestone, which they can turn around and be repurposed for construction materials. So all in all, that the goal of doing all of that is to keep the cost down and the purity up. Those are the two things that are critical. The refinery is designed to produce enough lithium hydroxide to support the production of batteries for approximately 1 million electric vehicle, vehicles are about half of the vehicles that are being made now. With an expected capacity of 50 gigawatt hours of battery-grade lithium per year, um, and that's the key component, of course, to make the batteries. Now, we have learned from Tesla over the uh, yesterday or whatever day that was. It seems like, yeah, well, this was just yesterday. We learned from them um, that, they're, that they have uh, uh, enough uh 4680s that are be, be, being able to oh, see. Well, what we one of the things we learned is that they could put they're potentially going to double the capacity of this facility. So uh, it's a huge facility, but maybe uh, it doesn't have to double the size of the facility to double the capacity. But they are they do have the plans in place in order to be able to double the capacity. Um, let's see what else did we learn? We learned that this plant is on target to provide lithium hydroxide to Giga Texas later this year. Um, we also let, learned that they, the landed cost of the finished 4680 battery right now is the lowest cost per unit of energy of any battery. That's landed on the ground in at Giga Texas is the lowest cost they can get it from anybody. Now we assume that they will continue, I, I assume they'll continue to drive this cost even lower. They'll try to find ways to make the the lithium uh, hydroxide cheaper. They'll find out ways to, you know, use the byproducts more effectively. Um, they'll find ways to make the rest of the battery less and less expensive and, and still maintain the quality. Um, now, we have known previously that the dry cathode that will be supplied by this lithium is working well. That's doing fine, according to what we understand. We learned that the engineers, though, are still trying to get the dry anode to work at scale. Elon seemed to make an inside joke that they're also hopeful of eliminating the anode altogether, he says, as the best part is no part. So I reached out to Jordan Gisagi, who told us this about that. He says, on the outside, on the anode side, rather than having a copper foil covered with graphite anode material, you just have a copper foil. Then you plate the lithium directly to the copper. He says the problem is, of course, like I understand what he's talking about here, but maybe you do. He says the problem is, of course, lots of expansion and contraction stresses and the, une the uneven plating and the dendrites that can short out the battery. Well, I remember seeing some of his early videos where he talks about the fact that when all this is happening, as the as the electrons are going in and coming out or whatever, that the battery expands and contracts and the different parts of it, it contract and expand at different levels. And I know that all of that's taking place, but I don't fully understand what he means in this exact instance, but that's what he tells us about the possibility, I guess a real possibility of eliminating the anodes. anodes. Anyway, as to final production of the 4680, we got zero. We know that there is enough to keep the Cybertruck in batteries, but so far that isn't requiring very, very many. We didn't hear anything about the future of Cybertruck either. So to know whether or not they're going to make a lot of Cybertrucks, which would require a lot of these 4680s. But we did hear that Tesla is not battery constrained right now with regard to vehicles. All right. So there's a bunch of critical stuff with regard to the batteries uh, there in Texas with regard to 4680s, with regard to the, the materials that are going into the batteries, with regard to the Cybertruck, who's using most of the batteries, or at least was using most of the batteries. Maybe they're being put into some other vehicles now. I think that they're particularly useful in the uh, performance versions of the Model 3, Model Y, etc. So that's what we learned about that. Now, the capacity for Austin for batteries, what, according to Elon in previous conferences, he has said that the capacity there is 200 gigawatt hours. And if Tesla were making that many, they'd be able to solve pretty much any battery problem. That is a lot of batteries. 
there I don't think there's any, anywhere near that. We've been hoping and and waiting for them to say that they've reached their initial first capacity, which is 100 gigawatt hours, which would still be a lot of batteries. Uh, but so far, we haven't even heard that they've reached that level. Now, the constraint on batteries is on the Megapack side. They mentioned this la last conference call. They said that there was a there was some kind of a of a shortage. In this particular conference call, they said, well, the, the the shortage would be with Megapacks, and that has become an even more difficult situation because those batteries are primarily the the the, the Megapacks are primarily made from imported batteries from China. And so we've got all these issues with China right now. Now, they did say uh, that they ha are on a likely path to ensure that this is not an issue going forward. Because remember, we not only have the 40 gigawatt hours of batteries that go into the 10,000 megapacks that are made in Lathrop. I mean, that 40 gigawatt hours, that's about the entire capacity of Panasonic and Reno. Okay, that 40 gigawatt hours is about what they can do. Totally. Now, apparently that's increasing every year and they've got some hopes and expectations that they're going to get maybe by 2030, they're going to really make that uh, of that factory way more productive. But right now, that's about the total capacity. But then you've got another 40 gigawatt hours that you're going to need down in Texas at the new uh, Megapack factory that's under construction right now. So where are those going to come from? Uh, right now, I guess, you know, a lot of them are coming from China. And of course, maybe that's going to be solved anyway. But for now, they knew that they had to find alternative options. So, and I'll talk about those. So number one, what about the CATL line in Reno that was supposed to give us 40 gig gigawatt hours of capacity specifically for megapacks? According to a press release on the subject, this line will initially only produce 10 gigawatt hours of capacity and there was nothing. I couldn't find anything anywhere to say when that production might start. They've had that. They've had that uh, line for a very long time. They've got had a. They bought. I think they built a little building to make them in, uh, but we just haven't heard any more about that. So they've been. They've had other kinds of capacity that have been coming on. In particular, one of the big ones was the Panasonic factory in Kansas. Well, I couldn't find anything on that. They didn't say anything about that at the at the conference call. So I asked Grok. Grok says Panasonic is finishing up a major electric vehicle battery manufacturing facility in DeSoto, Kansas, which is set to be one of the largest of its kind globally. The current status is this. The over 4 billion facility began construction in 22 November 22 is expected to start production in Right now, spring of 2025, it will initially produce 2170 cylindrical lithium-ion batteries for EVs, primary for Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y, with an initial capacity of 30 gigawatts per year. Now, that's even less than what they're making at uh, Panasonic in Reno. The plan is designed to be a Panasonic-designated net-zero facility focusing on reducing CO2 emissions. Recent progress, as of June 2024, Construction was on track with the 5 million square foot facility expected to be the largest EV battery plant in the world upon completion. They have applied lessons from the Reno operations to accelerate the ramp up. He's expected to employ 4,000 workers, has attracted suppliers like h and Recharge, which will invest 110 million, et cetera, et cetera. I don't care about that. Um, this potential $4 billion investment could increase the plant's capacity. They're going to, uh, planning to also make 4680s there, could increase the plant's capacity to 88 gigawatt hours. Now, that'd be a big plant by 2031 with long-term goals of eventually reaching 200 gigawatt hours. That would be a very, very big plan. Then you have LG Energy, Energy Solutions, who is building a facility in Arizona to produce 53 gigawatt hours of batteries annually, a decent size, including 36 gigawatt hours of 4680 style batteries and the rest as LFP cells, cells for energy storage. Tesla would be the, one of the customers, but they have secured a contract with a, another legacy US automakers for 10 gigawatt hours of these 4680 cells. So they're not the sole client. And then, uh, but there could be a place where Tesla will be getting a lot of batteries in the future. This facility producing 46 series cylindrical batter batteries is expected to be completed in late 2025 and start mass production in the first half of 2026. So 
Then you have Panasonic is also building a 4680 plant in Japan. I didn't find out any information on that. Tesla's indicated they will eventually build 500 gigawatt hours of 4680s in Reno, but they haven't talked about that for like a year. So I don't know if that is still on plan. Okay, so do you now know everything you ever wanted to know about Tesla's battery capacity, battery plans, what they're what, what they're building, what they hope to have available? I mean, when you add all that up, it is a ton. Well, ton. Anyway, it's a lot of batteries. It should be plenty of batteries to take care of their the needs that we've talked about. But then Elon says in the meeting the other day that he wants to do terawatts of energy storage, of megapacks, terawatts, not terawatt, terawatts. Well, if you're going to do terawatts of those, you're going to need a lot more batteries. Now, a lot of those could come out of China because, you know, we have the facility there to make megapacks in China. My guess is that we're going to make uh, another facility to make megapacks in India, probably make megapacks in Europe at some point. Um, all of those could be supplied by, you know, Chinese like CATL or South Koreans uh, like LG, Japanese, uh, et cetera. But my guess would be, knowing Elon, he likes to have the battery manufacturing close to those facilities. So we'll see if we eventually see more battery capacity going in. For instance, we know that there is battery capacity to make 4680s in Berlin. Um, we, that's, a, I think, a, 100 gigawatt hours there. Um, so where are they on that? Uh, the last we heard, they were making cathodes and then shipping them over to be used in uh, California at the at the battery uh, 4680 facility there. But we heard somewhere along the line that maybe they were getting ready to switch over and start making the entire battery there in Berlin. So, okay, that's all I know for now. Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, was this helpful, useful? I will continue with part two of this idea, this concept of really trying to go past what we've heard to give you more information to be able to make to make wise decisions with regard to your investment in Tesla and with regard to just your interest in following the amazing uh, story of Tesla and Elon Musk. Um, part two will probably be about... Uh, the actual uh, uh, robo taxis. I have a whole bunch of ideas uh, from some of them are just my own, some from other people about the robo taxi rollout, what that's going to look like, and what the total, you know, revenues stream might look like as well. So, with all that said, uh, hit like, subscribe, notify, all that jazz. Uh, earlier today, I did a, a fantastic. Uh, video with uh, uh, Jeff Lutz. Can't, how can it not be fantastic? Uh, you may want to take, if you haven't already taken a look at that, there is the card right there to go check it out. Uh, tomorrow will be a normal day with, uh, as far as I know, Larry Goldberg in the afternoon. Oh, it will not be Brian Wong in the evening. It might be part two. That would be a possibility. I do have Phil Basil tomorrow. He and I will be doing a video tomorrow, maybe one or more. I'm sorry, on Friday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Man, am I confused. Tomorrow's only Thursday. So tomorrow will be Sir Basher in the evening at 745. And it will be uh, 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 Bradford Ferguson uh, will be at the 5 o'clock, 515. Yeah, almost always. 515, 520 California time would be when Bradford will be on. So look forward uh, to checking those out tomorrow. Then you can support the channel by doing a little thing with uh, you know Patreon. You just have to go down in the information below like that. You could be sending me three bucks a month if you like. Hey, at this point in the in the conversation, oh, you know what I'd like to do for you if you, you've hung in this long? You probably know this already, but it'd be fun just to take a, a quick look to see where Tesla is trading uh, right now. Uh, we've got Robinhood uh, right there. And it turns out that in the after hours, we're up another buck at $251.80. It's been great talking to you.